This is Living History Footnotes for the Sudbury Astronaut Training Story. If you haven't seen the main episode yet, please check it out first. I will link it in the description. In today's episode, we're going to learn a little bit more about Dr. David Pearson. We're going to talk about some other connections that Sudbury has with space. And I'm going to give a PSA to all these shatter cone hunters that might be out there. All that while sitting at this picnic table because there's going to be way too many shadows if I walk around because the sun is way too low on the horizon at this time of year. Anyways, let's get into it. This week's featured comment comes from my new friend Daryl at Fly North Productions. He has a really fantastic YouTube channel that I often enjoy more than my own videos, so you should definitely check it out. We're hoping that we might have a chance to work together on a project in the future, so stay tuned. Anyhow, Daryl writes, Love the pride with which Dr. Pearson spoke of Sudbury and the astronaut training that went on here. Great job, Warren. Thank you very much for that, Daryl. And I chose this comment partly because it's a good transition into what I want to talk about first, and that is Dr. David Pearson. David Pearson was such a big help both for this episode and the last one on Sudbury's regreening story. He's been extremely gracious with his time, and David is the sort of person who is genuinely passionate about Sudbury, about science, and he really helps to ignite that passion in other people too. Pearson is the founding director of Science North, which is a world-class science center here in Sudbury. There was a clip near the start of the main episode when I had some artwork on the screen. It showed an impact crater that was changing over time. There was also a brief shot in that insert of a TV host who was presenting the artwork. That, in fact, was David Pearson. In the 1970s, he hosted a program on TVO called Understanding the Earth. It was basically a series of geology lessons that were meant to be accessible to everyday people, like me. He told me that he never managed to get a copy of those videos because TVO didn't actually own all of the rights to the clips that they had inserted as part of the production. However, some amazing person named MineGuy101 on YouTube has uploaded most of the series. And that's where I um, borrowed those clips from, so big thank you for sharing that. I cannot recommend this series enough. It is very informative, even though it is 50 years old, and it's also kind of a neat look back at David Pearson in an earlier time of his life. I can't say enough good things about David Pearson. He helped me so much with this episode. He's so engaging, and he's just genuinely a good person. Back in 2016, he was made a member of the Order of Ontario, but despite that, I still feel like he is one of the very underappreciated figures in this province that deserves a little bit more recognition. Speaking of underappreciated figures, I did it again. My friend Louisa helped me film a shot in the main episode outside of the Holiday Inn, and I forgot to put her name on the credits, so I'm very sorry, Louisa. Consider yourself on the record now. God, that's embarrassing. The Apollo training missions aren't Sudbury's only contribution to the world of space. In fact, there's another really good example that you can visit, and it's at Lake Laurentian Conservation Area. There's a historical plaque in the conservation area at the site of a former NASA satellite tracking station. Back in the 1960s, NASA set up 180 of these around the world. It was part of a mission to gather Earth science information from the stars above. I don't personally know a lot about that story yet. I haven't done a lot of reading. This is just a mention for the footnotes episode, but I am curious. Is this something that you would find interesting for potentially a future episode of Living History? Please leave a comment and let me know. I faced a bit of an ethical dilemma when I was putting this video together. By taking videos of these very significant historical places and putting them on the internet for anybody to see, there is a risk that these sites could be opened up for damage or vandalism of some sort. It has happened before. When it came to the Holiday Inn slash Caswell site in particular, that is where the question really hit hard. I really wanted to include it because it's a significant part of the story, but Pearson told me that he has never shared that location publicly before my video. So basically, if that site were to get vandalized, would that fall on me? Is that something that I would have caused by putting this place on the internet? The things that did give me a bit of comfort with that site is the shatter cones there aren't very well formed. They're not the most striking examples in the Sudbury area. So in the first case, a lot of people simply wouldn't even know that they are there unless they were specifically looking for them and they had enough geological knowledge to be able to identify them. Pearson said he even had trouble finding them even with his geological background. 
I know that the people watching this video aren't the types of folks that would want to steal or even damage a shatter cone, but I do think it is a good opportunity for a reminder that that sort of behavior is awful and we should be calling it out whenever we hear about it or whenever we see it. Our last item for today is a quick PSA to anybody who might be following the footsteps of the astronauts, particularly at Anaping High Falls. It is a beautiful location that also happens to have plenty of great examples of breccia formations, but if you are there looking for shatter cones, you need to be aware of little formations that are deceiving you. And I say this because they deceived me too for the longest time until David Pearson taught me what I was actually looking for when it came to shatter cones. Take a look at this. Okay, while I'm here at Onaping Falls, I need to do a quick fact check public service announcement. You'll see a lot of shapes like this that have a center hole and a lot of shattering rock in a cone shape around them. These are not shatter cones. And I get why you would think that based on their shape and their size. I used to actually think that myself. As it turns out, these are actually dynamite blasting holes back from the logging days when people would blow up the falls to prevent the logs from getting hung up. So that's definitely human caused activity and not from the stars above. That is it for this week's episode of Living History Footnotes for the Sudbury Astronaut Training Story. As always, I encourage you to visit these places for yourself. When you go, be sure to take a photo, tag me on Instagram. I'm at livinghistoryca and use hashtag livinghistoryca as well, just so I have a better chance of seeing it. That origin story about the dynamite blasting at Onaping High Falls is actually the perfect segue into next week's episode. It's a story about the early days of logging in the Canadas, but more than that, it'll be a discussion about the history we choose to save and whom it benefits. Until then, be well. Mm -hmm.